All right. Uh, welcome everyone to my stream. And this is the world premiere of Age of Empires 4. So I'm just waiting for this game to load first. And then we'll see how it goes. Okay, the menu screen looks decent. Please take a moment to set your preferences. Alright. Subtitles are the game and game. Subtitles scale my character. Um, larger. Subtitles also have a low narration. No. Come and check this series. No. Contrast to mine. Now, go to the settings. Brightness. This is going to be the ability settings. But this looks good. Definitely Driven from their homes by armed invaders, a few hardy refugees faced the prospect of starting again. They would found a new village deep in the countryside. Okay, so this is the intro, okay? Establish a okay. With a new settlement established, oh. The first priority was locating a reliable food source. The simplest source was gathering from nature. Okay, so this is the intro of this game. That is... Okay, looks a lot like Age of Empires 2. And it's definitely good. And drag around multiple pieces like a okay? Save like a different bus. Who's those? Okay. So let there be addition. Okay, done. Now? With a healthy supply of food, the village could start to grow. You to do so, it. it would need Definitely. more hands to share the work. <laughs> Produce fire and each other villages. Yeah, yeah. Oops. Or from the town center. Same like Age of Empires 2. The same vibes. Age of Empires 2 was the first game that I played. Wow. It's so good. And let me first cut it. Cut it wood. Even if you the game, they're telling me to do. Let me start cutting the wood. Yaru, Mayten. Alright. Wow, the animations are so clean. Yeah. Can't re end, eh? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then there's one more. The new workforce could now turn to the growing village's needs. First, they would build a mill near their food source, so villagers could drop off gathered berries more easily. So we need to build the mill now. Okay, so the menu items okay here. Okay, so I'm going to go Wow. The animations are also so good. I am the neighbor. Build a mill. Next, the growing village would need wood to build with. Uh -huh. 
The growing community now had a steady supply of lumber. To make wood collection easier, villagers could erect a lumber camp near the forest. Building a lumber camp, easy. And it feels so much like Age of Empires 2. Cartoonish, but better. Thanks to the camp, Villagers no longer needed to travel as far to drop off lumber. The village now required additional houses to support its growing population. Yeah, additional villagers needed. Definitely. First time builder villagers. Yaru. Build a house. Where should I build a house? I will build it somewhere here. Easy. I can build one more lumber camp and one more building in the age one. Work on. Build three houses, okay. And Rad, work and day. Okay, so this feels a lot like a lumber boy too. Wow. Here, Werta. Work and day. Definitely brings back the old memories, man. Only there was an intro, like the one we had earlier by Sue. Already three houses are built. With additional housing in place, even more villagers could join the workforce. But a populous village would soon exhaust the natural food sources. To grow, the community needed dedicated farms. Work ten day. Easy. Work and day. Got re and day. Work and day. There should be an option to allow. Oh, that thing. I don't remember what it was. There used to be an option to automatically refill. I don't see that here. Wow, the farm dynamically gets updated, man. Whoa. This is some really good shit, man. So let me just try and move my monitor. My goodness, guys, this is feels so real. Yeah. Work and day. That does feel. Ah, that is the economy. Woodsmen and farmers now kept the village well supplied. Yeah. Further growth required knowing the countryside and finding more resources. For that, communities employed scouts. Scouts. Yes, Sammy and Day. Boy, well done. Yes, sir. Able to move quickly and see great distances. Scouts were key to discovering new resources. The most important thing for a scout to locate was a ready source of gold. Yeah, yeah. Gold source, okay. That should be easy. But wow. It feels a lot cartoonish, but the game is definitely much better than Age of Empires 2. Why can't we go like this? Why oh, can't? The other part is covered, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I think I should go from here. I don't think I'll be able to. It looks like there's a barricade. Okay, there's a road. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, there you are, the gold mine. That's the end, eh? Yes, sir. To prevent having to haul all large distances, 
expanding communities would establish a mining camp near the source of gold. So the war is just Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, what do we have on this side? I think, I think it's more about the enemy than it is about us. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah we're reaching terrains. Wow. Still the terrains look cartoonish again. But the map seems a lot expansive than the Age of Empires 2. A well placed okay, camp ensured efficient gold mining. Yeah, the 50 additional gold. Okay, okay that, that one will take some time. time. Now what? what? Ah, okay, okay, so I'm um, moving this ahead. Yeah, I think, think I'm heading into enemy territory now. Breathe Yes, sir. Okay, explore the yeah, yeah. With a good supply of gold, the village was becoming a large, a large town. town. Mm -hmm. Advance to the feudal village. The signpost of this growth would be the construction of a large landmark. Build a landmark, okay. It's better yeah. more gold. Yeah. Oh, this seems so natural, man. Yes, sir. This seems a lot like the terrain kind of thing. But I don't think I'll be able to move beyond any of this. If not for this road. I think I'll have to do that road. Use it to build a landmark. Have your king seat all nearby out of combat unit. Everyone has to take care of it. So I'll build it somewhere around here. Work and die. You said now every age advancement needs a new landmark. That is. Hey, even this was there the age of advice too. So I'm not so surprised. Auto is not there, unfortunately. Yes, sir. Uh, so it's a new Yes, I can't link beyond this. Yeah, I thought so, I can't move beyond this. And this also, I can't go beyond. So is this the only road? Ouch. Gandhi. Ask the Rende. I'll go back here. There is a gold over here as well as one over here. How does the gold of mine look? It looks okay. Does it look as dynamic as the farm? Hey, sir, I still render. Yeah, over there. It's almost complete. And another little key card that is still in the way. With the landmark in place, the once sleepy village announced itself as a thriving feudal township. The townsfolk had been driven from their homes before, however. This time, they would defend themselves. The first step would be constructing a barracks for infantry. I 
and be right here. Surely by your dead friend. Can my sword go up here? No. Okay, so somebody gave a like. Who is it? Thanks, Shashan, for the like. I really appreciate it. Wow. That's really a bad accident. And now I need to train spearmen. Once it had a barracks, the town could establish a standing force of soldiers. Simple infantrymen armed with spears were a common choice for these militias. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes, sir. Where's the one? I think I'll build one more house. Just to be on the safer side. Health is 50, armor is none. Moment speed 1.12 tiles per second. Alright. Yeah. Okay, this is faster. Fairer you were, sir. Okay, but I can't see the unit formation things that I used to have in the age of Empires 2. That's one unfortunate thing. And these farms are all pretty exhausting. How do we regenerate the farm? If yes, the farm yes. can't regenerate itself, uh, I'm not sure how this game is going to be. Okay, let's be a minute. The town now had a militia and could look to reclaim the lands lost to invasion. Nice. Oh, so there the are invaders there. had blocked the road north with a stout palisade. Although spears were of little use against these walls, the militia could burn down the obstacle with torches. Attack them. Attack them. Wow. The sound looks more dynamic. Okay. Yes. I think they have a sound engineering very well at this game. Wow. The sounds look so good. Wow, nice. It sounds more natural. Unlike Age of Empires 2. Yes. With the road open, the militia could now reclaim their lands in the north. They need a bigger army. First, the spearmen had to deal with a lone sentry. Hier! Und 
Advancing aggressively, the militia eliminated the enemy sentry. The invaders had a small cavalry camp guarding the road, but the militia was ready to attack. I need one of them to get out of the way. Yes, I will save it. Yes, I will Using me because earlier uh, it used to be on this side, this panel used to be on this side, and this resource panel would be on the top. That will get some people take some getting used to. Yarway, our tende stay on. Here are the leech. Well, there is a The spears were highly effective against cavalry, allowing the militia to win the day. Nice. All that remained was to destroy the invaders' stables. Nice. The invaders' cavalry post was destroyed, but other enemy positions awaited further up the road. Hostile archers defended the next camp, which would put spearmen at a disadvantage. The township needed cavalry of its own to deal with this, and so would need to build stables. To deploy that cavalry quickly, the town needed to build their stables near the front lines. Fortunately, friendly villagers came out of hiding and joined the effort.
With stables in place, the town could field horsemen of its own. The town now had a rapid like cavalry, skilled at harassing slower targets, such as archers. The cavalry eliminated the enemy archers and moved on to destroying the archery range itself. The invaders' archers and their camp were destroyed. A final enemy emplacement remained, one fortified with palisades and defended by spearmen. Okay. To deal with this target, the town would need longbowmen. First, they needed to build archery ranges in the area regained from the invaders. Once more, friendly villagers arrived to help. And you work This is like so many ones in this. Eat your Blue 
With several archery ranges in place, the town could add longbowmen to its forces. It's timber, Tayos! That's you, the bear, Timber! It's timber, Tayos! Here is they! Hey, all that? Yes, sir! 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 Y
Where a few lowly refugees had founded a small village, now rose a mighty city. From there would grow an empire. Some events leave a deep mark on history, but none on the land. This is the site of the Battle of Hastings. After almost a thousand years, no traces of the bloody conflict can be seen. But here, the fate of England turned. It's where a king was killed, and his victor claimed the throne. October 14th, 1066. We know what happened here on this day, thanks to this. The Bayer Tapestry. A carefully preserved illustrated record of events. It shows the main players. Harold, the newly crowned Anglo-Saxon King of England. And his challenger, William. Duke of Normandy. William claimed the previous king had promised him the crown. So, he assembled an army and prepared to sail to England to fight King Harold for the throne. But a storm thwarted his plans. Meanwhile, Harold discovered that a Viking invasion had landed in the north another threat to his crown, so he raced to fight them. In France, William waited for the right conditions to sail across the Channel to England.
The weather cleared. He seized his chance. Two hundred and fifty miles north, Harold had defeated the Vikings. Now, hearing of William's arrival, his army sped south. At nine o'clock in the morning, on this hill, William's Norman army were ready to do battle with Harold's Anglo-Saxon men. The stage was set, and up for grabs, England itself. On October 14th, 1066, William of Normandy stood ready for battle at the base of a hill. The high ground belonged to King Harold of England and his Anglo-Saxon army. Here, on this hilltop, the fate of England would be decided. This is the first to see spearmen. For spearmen, we have a cavalry. Bene audite. Attendez les commandements. Voyez prest, compagnon. Charge. William's Norman army made the first charge, launching a direct assault on the shield wall. Though William's army fought fiercely against the shield wall, it would not yield. As one man fell, another took his place. Overlapping shields in tight formation made for a near impenetrable barrier. Realizing his army could not break the shield wall, William called for a retreat. William's feigned retreat was working. The Anglo-Saxon army broke their shield wall formation, leaving gaps for William to make a move. With Harold's men no longer in shield wall formation, William could pick them off as they charged. More Norman men-at-arms reinforced William's army. The Anglo-Saxons had deployed rows of spearmen to push back the invaders, but William had an answer. His sharp-eyed archers. Yeah. 
Norman archers joined the battle. Anglo-Saxon archers joined the fray, and the Normans' deadly cavalry ready to charge. But first, William's forces had to eliminate the enemy spearmen, whose sturdy pole arms could easily bring down a horse. The threat of spearmen cleared from the field, William's cavalry was free to charge at the Anglo-Saxon archers. The Anglo-Saxon army was in disarray. Their shield wall had been neutralized and their numbers were dwindling. Now the only thing standing between William and victory was King Harold himself. The last of Harold's men encircled their king, prepared to lay down their lives to save his. More Norman cavalrymen took to the field. He's getting some reinforcements. Is that a permission? The Anglo-Saxon King Harold had fallen. In the confusion, some loyal soldiers fought to the death, while others scattered in panic. Leaderless and defeated, the last of the Anglo-Saxon yeah. army fled for their lives. The Normans celebrated victory over the English king, but William's quest to rule England was just beginning. Some other day. Uh, bye bye for now.